the NRA, they make the argument that, well, you know, you can get killed by anything, and uh, that's true. And uh, that point was actually proved to me last year when I was almost killed. Uh, I was almost killed at 11 o'clock on a Monday morning, which I don't know why I even mentioned that, but it just feels like a weird time to be killed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't expect to be killed on a sunny day at 11 o'clock in the morning. I was walking down Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California, listening to one of my favourite podcasts, and a guy came up to me just out of nowhere. I assume homeless, and maybe not, I don't know really, but I definitely know that he was, like, uh, very drug-affected. He was probably on meth or something like that, I imagine, and... To be honest, I wasn't concentrating, and he just was suddenly in front of my face. And like, I like to hopefully be kind in those situations. Who knows? Maybe he just wanted to be my personal trainer, you know? <laughs> You're like, give me 30 bucks, I'll chase you up some steps. He's like... <laughs> but it immediately got aggressive. This is how it got aggressive, with two fingers. He took two of his fingers, and he just pulled my, my headphone cord out of my ears, so my earpiece and now he has my full attention. And this is what he says to me. He goes, hey, I've been talking to the devil. And in that moment, I did get the impression that he had indeed been talking to the devil. <laughs> I got the impression that he was not making this up. He had not overheard the devil at a party and was now passing this off at his own information. No, nope. <laughs> bare minimum, devil had been CC'd on every aspect of this plan, bare minimum. He goes, I've been talking to the devil and I've got a knife. Now, shit just got real. I hadn't noticed because we, he's staring me directly in the face. I hadn't looked down. But now I look down and I see it. It's, well, it's not really a, it's a weapon. That's what I would say it is. It's a giant shard of like double pane glass that he's obviously found. And he's wrapped like gaffer tape, electrical tape around it to form this like makeshift handle. And he basically has this like cool kind of looking glass sword, right? And it's weird when you know you're about to die, but at the same time, you're like, dude, that is creative. Like, <laughs> you should stick at that. You are like a meth giver. That is good. <laughs> but I know shit has now got real, because if he just leans into me, he's going to cut me open there on the street. And in that moment, I start to panic. He goes, hey, I've been talking to the devil and I've got a knife. And I look down. And then I realise that no matter how far I travel around the world, I will always be an Australian because the next thought that came into my head... <laughs> say that's not a knife. <laughs> all the me's from all the other universes were like, say it, say it, say it. One of us has to. We've been waiting for this moment forever. Say it, say it, say it. I think the biggest regret of my life is that I did not say it. I, I honestly want to know how it would have worked out. I just want to know that I could be cool enough in that moment when like a like meth addled like guy comes up to me and is like, I've been talking to the devil and I've got a knife that I could just look down and go, that's not a knife. <laughs> And I like to think he would have loved it. Like, in the way I imagine it, I, he'd be like, ah! Oh, my God! I love that movie! <laughs> you know what? Things have been bad for me recently, but this has really turned me around. I'm going to get a job, sort my life out. Thanks, mate. Oh, my God. Wait until the devil hears about this. He is... <laughs> he's going to love this. But I did not say it. I did not say it in that moment. I was too terrified. He goes, oh, I've been talking to the devil and I've got a knife and the devil told me that I have to stab you. And in that moment, I now realise that maybe I am about to die until he says the rest of his sentence. He goes, I've been talking to the devil and I've got a knife and the devil told me that I have to stab you and kill you and take your phone. <laughs> and I just start laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> because I know how shit my phone is. <laughs> I'm like, mate, you can have my phone, have my phone. The devil has given you a bad steer today, my friend. <laughs> He's gonna message you later like, did you do it as we planned? 20 minutes later, you're gonna be like, okay! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> I do think about that moment a lot because I actually think I was close to, it was one of those moments where your life, <sighs> but the thing I think about the most is my friends, you know, like you travel a lot for work and you miss your friends and a lot of my friends are Australians and a lot of my friends are comedians and I just, I could just imagine them at my funeral, you know, standing around trying to be upset. But each of them, <laughs> each of them just looking at each other like, why didn't he say that's not a knife? Um, <laughs> I, I love Australia. It's been very, very kind to me. And uh, I think it's a great country. Sometimes I think we're accidentally great. I think it's amazing. Like you, we have this, like we can't find anyone to lead the joint, but we still keep nailing it. It's like, we've got the best car in the world, can't get anyone idiot, like everyone who drives it's drunk, but we still get home first. <laughs> so, uh, we are indeed the lucky country and I've been very lucky to grow up in this country, but it has, you know, some other problems. Like, we're not, well, okay, we're not top of everything. Uh, I think it was last year, we were bottom three in the world uh, for climate change. Bottom three, only beaten, uh, to be honest, by Saudi Arabia. Uh, which is a country 50% oil and 50% sand. <laughs> and Kazakhstan, which I thought was a country Borat made up. So, <laughs> but on everything else, we nail it in this country. Last year, they did this survey of the most livable places in the world. They do it every year, right? Last year, Australia had three of the top 10 most livable cities in the entire world. Three of the top 10 in this tiny little nation of 24 million people. Sometimes I don't think we think about that enough. The top three, of course, were Melbourne, Sydney, and Adelaide. <laughs> oh my God. How shit is the rest of the world? No, I joke, right? But that's actually our expectations being too high. We are nailing it on the world stage. But there are some things we have to talk about in this country. I love this country. It's been great to me. And I wish there were a day where I could celebrate each year how great I think this country is. But unfortunately, I don't think that January 26th can be that day. And I think we have a great opportunity in this country right now to change it. Now, before anyone... There's some people who will be like, hey, and there'll be some people like, oh, this is not what I came here for. And <laughs> it's nice to have people come all the way from Ipswich for a show. So I... <laughs> well, that, I mean, Pauline Hanson is the best example of how stupid racism is at its very core, right? Because when I started doing stand-up comedy 21 years ago, one of my first ever routines was about Pauline Hanson. I used to do a routine about Pauline Hanson because she was like, oh, Asians are going to ruin Australia. Oh, they're going to come here and we're going to be flooded by Asians and we're all going to be Asians. <laughs> And now 20 years later, she's back. She's like, oh, nah, Muslims. We're all going to be Muslims. We're going to be flooded. Oh, Muslims. <laughs> and I'm watching that going, I remember stuff. What happened to the Asians? Like, <laughs> why are you so... Because she's cool with the Asians now. She's like at sushi train, like, oh, nah, it's the Muzzies. <laughs> That's how stupid racism is. That's the story of racism in this country, right, mostly, is like someone comes in, they get hated on for a while, and then we move on to the next group, right? It makes sense. I mean, to be honest, like, maybe the Asians started the shit about the Muslims. That's smart. <laughs> I, that's how you get the heat off, right? You move it on. That's what the Muslims have got to do. You've just got to pass it forward. <laughs> oh, you know who you need to worry about? The Amish. Coming here on boats, because they can't build planes, so 